Hey guys, it's Penna Daily here, and welcome back to my newest Let's Play, Kickle Cubicle. As you can see, it's an NES game. It's a uh, from made in 1990 by Irem. It's a puzzle game of the mm, Adventure of Lolo sort. It's I especially like it because it's mostly a work smarter, not harder. And now we're in the attract mode, so I'm just gonna play this. Uh, there are a few things you need to know, so we'll just start. For one thing, uh, there are four lands. Each land is roughly 16 or 17 er, um, islands with the uh, final boss, or final boss, with the boss at the end of the <laughs> world. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do half a world per episode, because any longer than that, you might start getting a little uh, bored. It's a fun game, but if you're not playing it, it can get a little samey. So, this is going to be, they're going to be shorter episodes than normal. Probably about 10-15 minutes, so we'll see. Anyway, for now though, let's start the game. So these guys are Noggles, and you can freeze them with your ice breath with B, and then kick them also with B. And your object in each island is to get the Dream Bags. That was just the first one, I promise they do get more complicated. The early parts of this game are really easy, the later ones not so much. But the thing about this game is it is always, the answer is always think about it more, not get faster. The game really doesn't rely on twitch reflexes. So here we have our first real enemy. That is, that penguin is named Mr. Hoople. I am not kidding. And of course, he can be killed either by freezing him and kicking him, or by kicking an ice block into him. Those ice pops, um, if you pick them up, they give you 3,200 er, points. The beautiful fantasy kingdom is now under the rule of the wizard king. The ravishing palaces were hidden, and these islands were made to confine us. Kickle, please get back the palaces and revive the fantasy kingdom. Yeah, the people of the fantasy kingdom are the food, mostly, and there's another land, Toyland, where there are toys and such things, and they will talk to you. Now, see those balls that say, that have peas on them? Well, if you crack one of those open, you will freeze everything on screen. They still thaw out at normal speed, so, you know, you want to be careful. I guess those are bell peppers? Uh, any early NES graphics. But yeah, I like this game for a number of reasons, and one of them is that they are really, really good about introducing each mechanic slowly, but with enough that you really know what you're doing. So, watch out for the knuckles. The knuckles can kill you, by the way. Kickle is a one-hit point wonder. Um, one single hit, and he will die. And that up there is Princess Mira's ring. Um, if you pick it up, you will go into a sort of an alternate dimension thing. Where you will, uh, basically... You know, you all you do is... There are no dream bags. The entire island sort of fills with flowers or mushrooms or whatever. I didn't really need to do that, oh well. Yeah, wait, I can do this, okay. This is an ice pillar. You put those down by pressing A, and they're used to block enemies in, and also, you know, make blocks stop. So Princess Mirror's ring, basically, you don't have to complete the level. The entire island fills with flowers or crystals or what have you. You collect as many as you can before time runs out, and then you move on. Alright, this now is our first introduction to springs. So, be careful though, when you kick it when you kick a nice block into a spring, it will hit the spring and then of course bounce back. Be careful that you are not hit, because if you are hit by an ice block in motion, you will die. Pumpkins! 
it's all very, and of course that was a one-up I picked up. It's all very, it's very simple. And one of the things I like is how the game takes its time about introducing things to you. And here we meet our second enemy, Max. Max the chicken. Yes, I don't know either. He wears shades. And the thing to remember about Max is that he will kick frozen ice blocks. Um, so yeah, if I hadn't been, if I hadn't been fast enough to kick that noggle back at him, he would have kicked it up at me and I would have died. I have no idea what these are supposed to be. P maybe they're supposed to be potatoes? I, maybe they're, maybe they're sweet potatoes or something, I don't know. And here we have another new enemy, Rocky. And we also have this colored stuff. It is called in the manual Slippery Ice. Um, but given that, you know, it actually looks like it's some sort of weird covering on the ice, and the Noggles can't, uh, get a step on it, as a kid, I always called it Noggle Hide. And those of you who did not live through the 80s probably do not know what Naga Hide even is. <sighs> the thing with Rocky is you can freeze him and he turns into an ice cube. But if you try to kick him, he will just thaw out and hurt you. These are onions. I like onions. Alright, and I've probably gone way too long here. So this is going to be my last one, and we'll cut it off here after this level. So, you just, yeah, die. Okay, uh, for him, I'm going to put that there. The thing is this, now, you do have to, the thing about Noggles is that they're slow, and of course you kick them into, um... You kick, they're slow, and you kick them into things, but they can and will hurt you. So, you know, be careful and don't walk into them. There are episodes where that actually... Er, episodes. There are places in this game where that is... Levels where that is actually going to be a, an, a real problem. There we go. And there. And don't... The other thing is don't forget to pick up a dream bag when you have... <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it looks like, you know, these are going to be... Mm, okay, actually, I... These take less time. The first, at least the first few, will we'll go maybe the whole... I'll, I'll finish off the whole world. Because a seven-minute video, after you've been used to 30 minutes, is just... Yeah. So, yes, you, there you see that Max the Chicken will kick, th kick things at you, and you have to use that. You can kill them. Now, the thing with non-noggle enemies, sometimes if you kill them, they will respawn. Sometimes they won't. A lot of it depends on whether you need them to solve the puzzle, or whether they're just there to ruin your day. It could be either. Meet our newest enemy, the spine. Yeah, these guys. They are not fun. They will follow the line of whatever, um, the edge, basically, of whatever area they are in. They will break ice blocks. And they will, you know, you can't kill them. They are probably the, the most dangerous enemy, well, there's one that's worse, but for the most, most of the game, they are the most dangerous enemy you will face. Because... They, you know, they're, they're sort of the terminator of the game. So, of course, here, we get to come across here. And this bit is kind of fun. Ah. Prob the other problem with Noggles is that you never know where they're going to turn, necessarily. And you can wind up just, you know, screwing yourself out of a good shot if you're not careful. And there we go. And there we go. Yeah, you see, the game, it's a little repetitive, and it's kind of a, it's a lot of fun, it's, it's a lot of fun to play, I think. So as I said, you know, at this point, we'll, we'll go through at least 
since this is the first episode, we'll go through the full thing and then deal with it. So, now, the trick to dealing with spines is to keep an eye on how they're moving. You want them, basically, you want to be certain that they will, you know, that you know which direction they're going to go, because, of course, they're always... Um, you know, they're always hugging the wall. So just make sure you know which direction they're going and which wall they're hug, and you know what their path will be. If you lose track of them, they'll wind up killing you when you're not paying attention. And then we have this one. This doesn't really introduce us to holes in the ice, but it's certainly the first that really make them a, a big deal. Holes in the ice you cannot walk across. Enemies cannot walk across. But an ice block will go across. So, this this is pretty easy. All, all you have to do, of course, is you know, stand here and just do two, you know, one block by block. And then pick up your last dream bag. They don't really start getting hard until they don't until probably, you know, the third world. The, f the first few are really, and then they really, really get hard in the special game, but we'll deal with that. So this one, of course, we meet our newest um, enemy, Spark the Bomb. He blows himself up, usually if Kickle's anywhere nearby him. He will take out uh, the nine block uh, radius of ice around him. So even if you're if you're in that radius, even if you don't get hit by his explosion, you'll fall into the water and drown. And if he sees you, he will actually rush right at you. Now here is where things start getting interesting, and you know you have to start really thinking in extra dimensions. I'm just going to freeze you and keep you out of my way. So, now that we've done that, we just, you know, we put that pillar there, kick that down. We're basically going to make a bridge around these rocks. There you go. And you can, the thing, now an interesting thing to remember is that those ice pops are solid. As far as the enemies concern, are concerned, ice pops are no different from rocks or ice cubes or ice pillars. You can pick them up, and, and of course ice blocks will go through them. But as far as enemies are concerned, they, they're impassable. You'll, and you'll use that later to make you, to, you know, solve puzzles. You'll make use of that to solve puzzles. Put that up there. So now, of course, we get to make a bridge around the holes in the ice. And just so, you know, just deal with the, you know, lure the noggles to the right places. There we go. And just get, I'm gonna just kill you so that I actually have you in the right place this time. Good. over, kick you up, and now I can just do that, and kick you over, and up, yeah, at this point, now here's something interesting, see how the spine kicks that dream bag around? It can go to anywhere in the, uh, the nine spaces surrounding the space it was in. So, Bines have been known to kick, and other enemies, have been known to kick dream bags through... Dia kick them diagonally. And so kick them onto places that could not be reached by the enemy. Sometimes you can use that to get a dream bag without having to get near a bad enemy. So, kick this guy. Now, these chickens, these maxes... They do not, they're here mostly to give you a hard time and ruin your day. As such, they do not respawn when killed. Oop! 
and I walked right into the guy. That's that's something that will happen. If your timing is not good, you will kill yourself. It's not that big a deal because this game has unlimited continues. That said, I still like picking up one-ups just because I like picking up one-ups. But yes, you, you you can you lose you can die just as many times as you need to, and it won't matter because this game has unlimited continues. It's just that you'll get very very sick of seeing the continue screen. There we go. And yeah, with these guys, you might as well kill them because. You know, but they don't respawn, so... Sometimes you kind of want to avoid killing an enemy, because if he respawns, he'll respawn in a bad place. So, yeah. And now the tomato talks to us. Hurry up, Kickle! Climb up the vine which is going to sprout here! And you can reach the palace! A monster is in the palace, scaring the princess. Please destroy him! Okay. Yeah, early era Nintendo game. Or, well, early. It's actually a fairly late era Nintendo game, but, you know, they, they weren't much for story. They really couldn't be unless they were an RPG. And even then, that was kind of difficult. What with the, um, you know, character limits and everything. Speaking of, character limits are something I'm sort of going to talk about here very shortly. So, but before that, we get to this, which, you know, this was pretty impressive. I mean, it wasn't anything Ninja Gaiden hadn't done before, but this is how they did scrolling, you know, multiple scrolling things. And it did give an illusion of depth. It looked much cooler when the Super NES could actually do it with backgrounds, but... So here we have our boss. His name is Koke, which is... Basically, uh, the Japanese onomatopoeia for a chicken clucking. Cook! Cook! Yeah. And hee hee hee, welcome, Kickle, I have been waiting for you. Yeah. So, Koke throws ice blocks at us and then attempts to bum rush us. And you basically have to hit him with the ice block. It will take three shots. Uh, don't expect it to always be this easy. Uh, they do, the bosses do get harder. So, there we go. We've beaten the boss, and here we meet the princess. With her eggplant retainers. Princess Pumpa. Oh my dear Kickle, you saved me! There are four palaces in this fantasy kingdom, but... The Wizard King came and took all the palaces. Get back all the palaces. Yeah. So, Fruitland. Fruitland is our next world. As you can see, it's shaped like a pineapple, or possibly a grenade. And, but this is where we are going to call it for now. So next time I will take on this particular, um, I will take on this particular level and we'll start dealing with Fruitland. Uh, so thank you for joining me for Let's Play Kickle Cubicle and you have a great night. Goodbye.